Hello, welcome to module 60 of NPT LNOC, an introductory course on point set topology part 2. So, today we shall continue our uh, classification of one dimension manifolds which we started last time. Beginning with a any manifold with or without boundary, the first thing we did was to reduce the proof to the case of manifolds without boundary. And now, look at a manifold without boundary, take a cover by uh, coordinate neighborhoods. As soon as there is a cover, there will be a countable subcover because the manifold is second countable. The next thing is we want to understand how the two intervals I mean two open subsets which are homeomorphic intervals right they are all coordinate neighborhoods means they are homeomorphic intervals how they intersect in the whole space X. So we, we made two uh, list of things which are which are visual which are which we want to happen and one of them we consider namely when the two open intervals like this they actually intersect in a very nice way like this then we could we could get a, a map to the union okay from a open interval which is a homeomorphism so the union itself was an open interval with a homeomorphism so this was a nice case the next case that we want to consider today is that two of them have intersection two components and they intersect like this properly not like that or that and so on. So the two things are coming this way just the way in the first case and the other one also coming nicely like that. So this is the case we want to understand now and this is on desirable case. So that is the first one. After that, we will see that these are the only two cases possible. So, that will allow us to complete the classification. Okay. So, start with ME connected to one manifold, psi i from A i B i to U i be any two local parameterizations such that U 1 intersection U 2 consists of two components. I am just labeling the two components A comma B. The first thing is psi 1 inverse of A is A 1 comma C 1. Okay, see the, the domain of psi 1 is A 1 B 1. So, this psi 1 inverse of A is A 1 C 1 and psi 2 inverse of A is C 2 B 2. See, the domain of psi 2 is a to b2 so c to b2 so here it is starting at one end first end here and other one is ending at the other end so that is the hypothesis these are all hypotheses the second part third part is psi 1 inverse of b exactly the opposite here it is d1 b1 and psi 2 inverse of b is a to d2 so this is the this is the other end right end this is the left end and so on okay the third condition is now look at on the intersection psi 2 inverse of psi 1 starting from a uh, part of the interval a 1 b 1 go into the u 1 intersection u 2 then take psi 2 inverse come back to the interval part of the interval a to b 2 so from interval to interval this is a homeomorphism that must be order preserving on both the intervals namely the first portion and the second portion a and a and b correspond to a and b so first portion will be a1 d1 okay to c2 b2 okay so that is what uh, we want 
so it could be a1 b1 a1 c1 a1 c1 and d1 d2 doesn't matter and the other one will be d1 b1 to a2 d2 so both of them should be order preserved then m is homeomorphic to s1 the conclusion is of course there are four different conditions i have assumed here even before that there are only two of them you have to have and we have already assumed that that none of them covers the other one and so on remember that in any case the intersection consists of two components with this part automatically gives you that u1 and u2 are not uh, so contained one contained in the other okay so that that is uh, not there is no need to separately state it so conclusion is that the union will be now homeomorphic to a closed interval closed uh, manifold namely the circle itself the entire m is circle in other words whenever such things happen there is no other open subsets open intervals and so on the whole, whole m will be union u and union u2 so this is the whole idea okay let us see how the proof the proof is not all that difficult once you have understood the previous one so here so just look at the picture a1 to b1 you have one coordinate neighborhood u1 okay psi1 and here a2 to b2 you have another one psi2 of course the final picture i have put it nicely but right now you have to assume that this is some manifold that's all right so this is u2 part homeomorphic to uh, that one and that is the u1 part and the intersection is this a and b so u1 comes from here to all the way here up to here and u2 is from this point to that point so these two are the intersections a comma b right now psi1 inverse of a is this part a1 to c1 psi1 inverse of b is d1 to b1 okay similarly psi1 psi2 inverse of a is c2 to b2 and psi2 inverse of b is a2 to d2 okay not only that when you come from from here suppose is from here you go to here inverse image that is psi1 inverse okay and then uh, sorry so if you first comes psi1 here and then take psi2 inverse here so you get a map from a homeomorphism from a1 c1 to c2 b2 that must be order preserving okay similarly you start from here d1 b1 come here and then go by inverse image you get d1 b1 to a2 d2 that must be also order preserving so this is these are the assumptions that have both are order preserving then the conclusion is that this u1 union u2 is a circle not only that once you have that one there is nothing else m is a connected manifold so it has to be whole of this one this is what we have to see okay so pick up any point t1 comma s1 as shown here namely a1 less than t1 less than c1 and d1 less than s1 less than b1 then there exists unique points t2 and s2 what are they look at the image of s1 here and that is image of something here because this is homeomorphism in a way so there is a unique s2 here which comes to that one these are the points t1 psi1 of t1 is this point psi psi1 of s1 is this point they are also equal to psi1 of psi2 of s2 and psi2 of t2 respectively okay so you have started such uh, picking up this point so clearly these t2 and s2 will be obviously inside that a2 to d2 and c2 to b2 that's all okay after that what do you do now you just define the map lambda from 0 to 2 pi closed interval to m by the formula in the first part it is psi1 in the second part it is psi2 the only thing is you have to adjust the whole thing by reparameterizing the intervals okay and where do you take up to 0 to 
pi I am going to take psi 1, pi to 2 pi I am going to take psi 2. Here the picture is clear. So, from this point I will map up to this point using psi 1. Okay. From there, so parameter is pi pi here now. The pi to 2 pi I will use this map from S2 to T2. I, I will ignore the rest of this overlapping part. S2 to T2 I will reparameterize from pi to 2 pi. Similarly, T1 to S1 I am parameterizing 0 to pi. So, map will be like this. Okay. So, this part is coming here, this part is coming here. So, the arrow is here, this arrow is here, this way. So, you have to understand. So, this is counterclockwise since I have taken here. So, I have to, when I map this point T1 as 0 here, okay, e power 2 pi as 0 or cos theta cos 0 plus sin, uh, comma sin 0, that is the point here. And go all the way up till here and then pick up psi 2 here. So, the idea is clear and formula is also clear. What I have to do? Put some a t plus b so that t1 to t1 to s1, this interval goes to 0 to pi. So, that is the whole idea. So, this is the map. Okay. Similarly, t2 to s2 to t2 goes to pi to 2 pi. Okay. So, s1 minus t1 by pi times t plus t1. When t is 0, this is t1. When t equal to pi, pi pi cancels out, t1 t1 cancels, it will be s1. Similarly, when t equal to pi here, this will be 0, so this will be s2. When t equal to 2 pi, this will become pi pi, so a t2 minus s2 plus s2, that is be t2. Okay. So, you take psi of this, psi of that, except when these two points are the same, namely there are two formulas, you have to see they are same. Why they are same? Because psi 1 of this, psi 1 of this point, psi 2 of that point are the same, that is all. Similarly, when it is 2 pi also at the end, they are also same, you see. So, that is what you have to see. Okay. So, what happens is, first of all, 0 to 2 pi it is continuous, okay, because on the on the interval psi uh, on the common point they agree so it is a continuous function in each each in each interval 0 to pi and pi, uh, pi to pi it is given by a homeomorphism so it is injective this injective because they are mapped into different components different parts of the things here you see and here here comes the important thing that they are order preserving so, there is a common portion here, namely, I have taken this part. So, this part is covered by psi 2 also. I have covered this part, this part of B. This is covered by psi 2 also. On the intersection, they are order preserving. Therefore, the left out parts are, you know, they, they, are, they are never mapped by psi 2 onto this part. So, that is the whole idea. So, this is, this is similar to uh, what we have verified in the first case. Okay. So, the entire thing is injective except 0 and 2 pi are mapped to the same point. Oh, that is well and good because that is precisely what we wanted here. Therefore, this 0 to 2 pi will factor down to what? To S1. See, 0 and 2 pi are mapped to the same point. right? Therefore, lambda factor down to a continuous bijection from S1 to U1, U1 and U2. What is the projection map here from 0 to pi to S1, capital S1, T going to E raised to 2 pi i, E raised to T just, E raised to pi i, E raised to i t, because 2 pi I have taken. So, T going to E raised to i t or just cos t plus i sin t. So, that is the map. So, under that, this will give you a homeomorphism now, continuous bijection from the circle to M. S1 is compact, M is Hausdorff, therefore, this is a surjective map. So, it is a, a, a it is, it is not surjective, it is not, it, we do not know that one. 
it is curvective onto u and u in u2 so whatever it is it is homeomorphism onto its image and the image is u and u in u2 that much is covered but then u and u in u2 is open as well as being compact it is closed also therefore it must be the whole space because m is assumed to be connected so every bit is used here so we have completed the proof that m is actually homeomorphic to the circle in this case okay so two important cases which will produce the two different uh, final final uh, conclusions have been covered so now the claim is that there is no other case okay Th these are the only two cases that's all that is the whole idea all right so of course so I, I in the second case we have yet to prove you have to complete the proof also there is also that part having taken care of these two favorable situations we now claim that we are always in one of these two cases what is the meaning of that let me elaborate start with a hausdorff space psi 1 and psi 2 from minus 1 to plus 1 this doesn't matter you could have taken any open interval minus 1 to plus 1 to x be homeomorphisms on to some open subsets u and u2 of x respectively neither of them contained in the other assume that intersection is non empty then these are the only things that can happen no component of psi 1 inverse u1 intersection u2 which you have, I have assumed that it is non empty will be an open interval of the form a comma b for some minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 in other words it is this open every every component is an open interval right because they are all subsets of now minus 1 plus 1 so connected components of an open subset are open interval those open intervals none of them will be able to avoid both the end points away from the end point that is the meaning of minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 then what can what else can happen it can happen only it one of them one of the uh, end points must be there in the interval so i assume minus 1 if my plus 1 is also there, it is the whole space, it cannot be whole space. So, only minus 1 to b it can be or it can be a to 1. So, there are only two possibilities. Therefore, the conclusion is in particular u1 intersection u2 has at most two connected components. Okay. See, once you have proved this one, this in particular, this, this is obvious because connected components of u1 intersection u2 are in one one correspondence with the connected components of psi1 inverse of u1 and u2 inside the interval see this u1 u2 is happening inside the topological space x but here we have come to in the open interval so there you can see there are only this possibility so there are only two possibilities at the most you have two components so this is the strongest uh, thing first we have to observe next if u1 intersection u2 is connected that means there is only one component then u1 union u2 is homeomorphic to an open interval this is our first case so that's what i have to verify if u1 intersection u2 has two components then u1 union u2 is homeomorphic to s1 this is the second one so, this is precisely the meaning of saying that there is no other possibilities. Okay, let us verify this one. So, we have to just verify this one. These two, I have just elaborately tell you how this one comes as all. You have already seen it, but let us see. So, why this happened? Indeed, the argument for this is already used. So, I will again elaborate on this one. First of all, note that psi i inverse of u and u2 is a proper open subset of minus 1 plus 1. It cannot be the whole space because 
neither u1 nor u2 is contained in one one contained in the other so u1 intersection u2 cannot be the whole of u1 similarly cannot be whole of u2 moreover its components are all homeomorphic to open intervals and they are in one one correspondence with the components of u one intersection u2 because psi i is are homeomorphic the emphasis here is that none of them will be some middle portion of minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 so that is not possible assume on the contrary that one of the component is of the form ab with minus 1 less than a less than b less than 1 okay suppose it has happened we want to say it doesn't happen that means we have a middle portion here something okay then look at psi 2 inverse of psi 1 of ab that is some other cd that is contained inside again minus 1 plus 1 here i don't know what's happened psi 1 something has bad, something bad has happened here i don't know i don't care something has happened here whether cd c equal to d c equal to minus 1 d equal to plus 1 any all cases are allowed okay only thing you know that here also that cd is not the whole of minus 1 plus 1 okay let us see that may be useful or that may not be useful so let now alpha from minus 1 plus 1 to minus 1 plus 1 denote the function t going to minus t the reflection by replacing psi 2 i don't want to change the psi 1 the psi 1 there is something bad has happened Replacing psi two by psi two composite alpha, if necessary, I could have taken any other uh, any other homeomorphism, right? So take psi two composite alpha instead of psi. We may assume that psi two inverse psi one from A B to C D is increasing. That is order preserving. If it's order reversing, I will do do this one. If it's preserving, I don't want to do any. I I, I will not uh, change it at all. okay if necessary don't change it unnecessarily that's all okay when if it's increasing don't do anything if it's not increasing that it might be increasing because there are only two possibilities for a homeomorphism of intervals to intervals okay therefore you can change the second one by reflecting so now it will be increasing so once you assume that cd is a proper subset of minus 1 plus 1 right so it follows that minus 1 less than c less than 1 okay that is the my assumption or minus 1 is less than d less than 1 okay so i am assuming i am not assuming anything on ab ab is a bad assumed to be bad here what cd can be there are only two possibilities all right so i am using that fact now here that cd is not the whole of minus 1 to 1 so one of them at least c or d must be strictly inside the interval and that is going to cause us problem namely in the former case suppose c is the in the c is in the middle of the interval in the second interval okay what happens psi 2 of c and psi 1 of a they are coming very near but they are not identified they are in the open part right so what happens is Psi two of C and psi two one of are distinct points of X which cannot be separated by open sets. In the latter case, the same thing happens with psi one of B and psi two of D, which cannot be separated by open sets. So, in either case, you have got a contradiction to the Hausdorffness of X. Okay, so here is the picture, you know, fully explaining what is happening. This is your U one. Okay, and that is. the portion of u2 other portion i haven't drawn i don't care what is happening okay so psi 1 a is coming like this this uh, psi 1 part is coming like this okay a is some in, in between minus 1 to coming here and psi 2 of c just comes here this portion and this portion will be in every neighborhood of this a as well as b as well as c The a and c are not a and c are distinct points. Okay, sorry, not this portion. This the other portion because they are they have to continue for afterwards, right? 
Uh, this is not the end points of the interval. This portion will be common. So for every open interval, open uh, neighborhood of psi one of A inside the U one, there will be some portion every common with psi two of A. This, this is the uh, intersection part on the left left hand side. Similarly, here what happens? There will be on the on the left hand side there will be intersection part. These portions are distinct fine, so, but as soon as you hit it, a psi one of a and psi one of b, okay. So they are the image; they are there inside the inside our x, right? But they are distinct points. They are in a, they are in different ones. They are not assumed to be in the intersection, right? They are open intervals. So these two points, you know, contradict the. Fast darkness of the interval. So some psi c prime to c on this part, okay, will be coming there. Let's solve. So, so I don't know how many I have draw, drawn a rest of them. Some d prime to d that will be thing. That is the whole idea. So they are in the uh, they are in this part of this part. So uh, rest of the part here they are they will be common. So here all of them will be common. So you can't separate them by disjoint open subset. Okay, so that completes the proof of this first claim that no interval can be of this form. Once you have that, you have only two component at the most two components for the intersection. Now I have to say that all the hypotheses of the first case is covered, or all the hypotheses for the second case covered. That is all. Then these two and three are the only possibilities. Okay, that is the second part and third part here. So second part is the first part from from whatever we have seen. It follows that for each i equal to one and two, psi i inverse of u and u two is of the form minus one to a i or b i to one. This end or the other. This end. Okay. Therefore. On, in both of them, because I can apply the same thing to psi. Once I once I observed is of psi one by symmetry, the same thing should be true for psi two also. Okay. The conclusion once you have done for psi one, there is a complete symmetry. One and two you can change. That's all. So here a one minus a one to uh, minus one to a one and one b one to one. And then other case there also minus one to say a two and b two to a one. So these are four cases are possible. You know you can take four cases to be considered, but they are all symmetrical. So for definiteness, you just cover one of them. Argument will be the same in other cases. Okay. So consider the case when these intervals of the uh, of the four minus one to a one. And minus one to a two. See a two for psi two. This is for psi one. We claim that psi two inverse of psi one minus one a one. I am assuming that it's only one component, huh? In part two, we are assuming only one component. So one component is this is what is happening. If you look at the again, psi two inverse psi one minus one a one to minus one a two. Has to be decreasing. If it's increasing, what happens? Similarly, the a one psi one of a one and psi two of a two, they will be coming very close to each other, but they are different. So the rest, the other part, will always be the. They will have common part in every open neighborhood. There will be open intervals common to both of them. So they will not be selected. That is the meaning of this one. So, so if they come like this, there is a problem. So, if, so it must be decreasing. It should be the other way around. So, labelly, it should be like that, not like this. This is not allowed. So that is the meaning of that uh, picture. This kind of uh, identification is not allowed. They have to be like this. Which means this is if you this way, the other function should be like that. Okay, so this means that they must be yeah, here. So, so this must be decreasing. Otherwise, it follows that every neighborhood of psi one of a one 
and every node of the psi 2 of A2 will intersect each other contradicting the half darkness. Therefore, this psi 2 psi 1 psi 2 inverse psi 1 from minus 1 A1 to minus 1 A2 is decreasing. Now consider psi 1 prime, namely composite with alpha, psi 1 prime t equal to psi 1 of minus t. Then the two homeomorphisms psi 1 prime psi 2 prime fit the hypothesis of lemma 12.39. Uh, now they will be exactly like this, you can join them. No, no need to worry about what is happening here. Okay. So we are done. So that is case case 2. The case 3 also similarly, but I have to uh, show that the, we are inside the, uh, the second case correctly. Now we are assuming that we have two components for intersection u1 intersection u2. It follows that phi i of u1 intersection u2 must be again endpoints a minus 1 to a i disjoint union b i to 1 i equal to 1 and 2. Okay, this psi i, this is i is i here. These two, there are two cases to be considered again here. Namely, psi 2 inverse psi 1, you know, this component a minus 1 a 1 may be mapped to minus 1 a 2 there or minus uh, what b 1, b 2 to a 2, which way they are mapped, that is what I have to. So, this psi 2 component psi 1 inverse may be from minus 1 a 1 to minus 1 a 2 or it may be minus 1 a 1 to b 2 to 1. As soon as this happens, the other one namely b 1 to b 1 should be the other component that that is fixed. Okay, You have freedom only to choose where one of the component goes, the other the com component has to go to the remaining component, there is no choice. So I have to only these two cases here. Okay the first component here goes to the first component there or the first component goes to second component there. So, these are two cases. Again by symmetry, I have to just see what happens to the you know, one of the cases. So, case A, let us take. So, let us look at the case A. For the same reason as in 2, we conclude that this minus 1 A1 to minus 1 A2 has to be decreasing. Okay. So, that, that thing is coming again and again. So, let us consider change the change psi 1 by you know by a reflection. Then we now claim that now you have the whole thing changed right. So, as soon as you change uh, the sign the increasing decreasing will change on both the components. Here also it will component. The point is you can change the thing only on one of them automatically you can't change the other one because if you change that because the whole thing is one single interval only right though the intersections have two different components okay as soon as I, you adjusted the first one correctly you may or may not okay but here it is decreasing you have to change okay so that's the whole idea in this in this one so that's why i have written you know in this picture I have shown this portion coming here, this portion coming here. Okay. So now if you change this interval so that the both of them are like this, then you are in a nice shape, that's all. Alright. Whether you want to do it or not, it just it just depends upon you. But what happens once you do that? The other one. Okay, so this one we have seen already. Yeah, here. So once you change psi 1 like this, we now claim that the homeomorphism psi 1 prime psi 2 fit the hypothesis of lemma 12.40 completely. Clearly, psi 1, psi 2 inverse of psi 1 prime minus 1 to b 1 now, see uh, the all the things have changed because t has been changed, replaced by minus t here. Minus 1 b 1 to b 2 to 1 and Therefore, psi 2 inverse of psi 1 of minus 1, 1, 2 will be equal to minus 1, a 2. Okay. 1 to a 1 was minus 1 to a 1 was there. Now, I have changed the sign. So, this will become minus 1, comma 1 to minus 1 to a 2. Okay. The far end here, left uh, right send end is coming into the, the uh, left hand end here. Also, it follows that psi 2 inverse of psi 1 prime is from 
minus 1 b1 initial segment goes into far end b2 to 1. So, both of them will be increasing. Finally, it follows that psi 2 inverse composite psi 1 of minus 1 1 to minus 1 a 2 is also increasing. The other part is also increasing. Okay, for otherwise you will have psi 1 prime minus 1 a 1 minus a 1 and psi 2 from a 2 will be violating the hypothesis. <laughs> okay, so that is why we are in a nice situation of uh, the second lemma there. Therefore, the conclusion is that in this case the entire manifold has to be S1. Okay. We do not we don't need that right now, we just want we have, because I have not assumed that uh, x is connected here. Okay. So, I say even in unit is S1, that is fine. All right, this is the lemma in which which just says that whatever we desired only that will happen, that is all. Now, let us complete the proof of the theorem. Recall that we started with a connected one dimensional manifold. By second countability, we get a countable cover ui of x by open sets, all of them homeomorphic to say let us say phi i from ui to minus 1 plus 1. Inductively, we define a finite or infinite, we do not know, but countable. Okay. Increasing sequence, that is why sequence means countable in it, wk of open subsets of x such that each w k is connected, union of w k is the whole space that is all first we have, we have to do this way, but we will do it in much more elaborate way. So, I will, I will describe you as follows. So, how do we do that? Start with w 1 equal to u 1. So, you have, you have got a countable cover, so you have indexed it somehow, never mind but that indexing may not be very good. So, we are going to do some changes here. So, start with w 1 equal to u 1. Having defined w k, okay, so what I am going to do? Look at all those u i's which are, which are such that they are not contained inside w k and those which intersect w k. So, in the first case whatever, so, W1 is, uh, is defined. What is this S1? S1 is all those indices i in n such that ui is not contained inside u1 and ui intersection u1 is non-empty. Now, suppose there is no or uh, none of those things will intersect it at all. That will contradict the hypothesis that x is connected. Okay, there, so therefore, there must be some ui's which intersect right now suppose all of them are contained inside you then you don't have to take them at all you can drop them out so if everything contain everything intersecting this one is contained inside u1 then again you will have a problem there will not be anything so u1 is the last thing so you are we are finished so u1 equal to all of x right so you are done no problem so that's why there this set sk is non empty non empty subset of n so there is a minimal element so take the first one that is the minimum so sk is non empty okay if sk is empty you are finished of wk has to be x there is nothing that okay so and x is connected that's all we have to use we have used that one right because otherwise it would be disjoint union okay in that in that case we have achieved our goal there is nothing to do otherwise take the minimum nk that is depends upon k the minimum take the minimum so u n k you take put w k plus 1 equal to w k union u n u n k so in the first case is u 1 w 2 will be u 1 union u n 1 then next one will be u n 2 and so on the u n's are selected from this collection several of them may be left out, maybe all of them will come, but how they will come? They will come only the way they will intersect the previous thing, whatever has been constructed, okay, the collective thing, 
So, this is the union, it is not one single open subset collected thing, it has to intersect one of them, intersect the whole whole thing, something, all right, but should not be contained in fellow. Thing. There was a, this W k plus 1 is larger than W. So, we keep we, we keep increasing, otherwise we get stagnated. That is all. Now, let us see inductively we claim that each w k is homeomorphic to an open interval or it is s 1. There are two cases at each stage. As soon as it is s 1, we know that we have come to an end. So, what is the other case? The other case is each time you get that it is an interval. So, there we have not yet uh, completed the proof. Each time it is an interval, if you have stopped there, it is okay, it is an interval, you have completed the proof. But it may not stop, it may be infinitely, it keeps going on. So, in that case, you have to write a small proof there. That is all it remains, okay. So, let us see why this happens. Clearly, this is the case where k equal to 1 because w1 is u1, there is nothing to prove. u1 is an open interval. For k equal to 2, there are two cases to be considered. What are they? by the previous uh, lemma, we have in the situation of lemma 1 12.39 or 2 of lemma 12.40, right. Accordingly, we have the above two conclusions. See, any any interval, u1 is already an interval, okay, or in inductively wk is an interval, interval means what? Homeomorphic interval, another one is another interval and they intersect. So, the connected number of connected component is at most 2. If it is 1, the union will be homeomorphic to again interval. If it is 2, the union will be S1. So, that is the, those are the two cases. Okay. So, this way from U1, uh, 1 to 2 we pass. Suppose now we have come up to WK, some case. WK plus 1 is homeomorphic to S1. The the, the step stop, the sequence stops. Otherwise, it goes, keeps going. Well, what is it keeps going? Each time you are concluding that all the WKs are homeomorphic to open intervals. Okay, and we have what an infinite sequence. One bigger than the other. Sequentially, right? So in that case, why the entire union is a you know, is homeomorphic to an open interval. This is what we have to show. So, these things are not happening inside R, of course, right. That is the whole conclusion. I mean, finally, you have to. So, right now, they are abstract manifolds, one dimension manifolds. You want to show that the entire thing is homeomorphic to an open interval, which is same thing as showing that homeomorphic to R, all right. So, that is the last part here it remains to consider the case when w k is infinite in which case e w k is a proper open subset of x homeomorphic to an open interval. Proper means what? It is not the whole space, it is whole space is the sequence stops, no. So, the infinite case is the one we have, that is all. Starting with the homeomorphism f 1 psi 1, f 1 was psi 1, right? You could have I am re-indexing psi 1 from minus 1 plus 1 which is w 1. Okay. Apply proposition 12.30 with this a, a hat less than a less than a prime less than b less than b. Remember this, this proposition being equal to minus 2 I am choosing them now minus 2 less than minus 1 less than minus half less than half less than 1 less than 2 respectively and take g from alpha beta to w here i do not know what it is okay being any homeomorphism we get a homeomorphism f2 from minus 2 to this must be this must be taken as u2 the next one minus f2 minus 2 plus 2 w2 is the union such that F2 restricted to the small interval, smallest minus 1, minus half, plus half is your F1. Okay. F1 is defined by minus 1 plus 1, but 
on and the whole larger one we don't know only in the smaller open interval it is f1 and that is extended okay inductively having got a homeomorphism from minus k see this is the f this is the starting point f1 i have to, instead of psi1 i am using the notation f1 in the inductive hypothesis then i say f2 f2 is from minus 2 to 2 f3 will be minus 3 to 3 and so on okay so fk is from minus k2 plus k to wk similar to the above step we get a homeomorphism of k plus 1 from minus k minus 1 to k plus 1 to wk plus 1 such that restricted to a smaller interval of minus k plus k namely minus k plus half comma k minus half we check away half half from both sides on that it is fk the old map okay so now you define f from r to x by the rule ft equal to fkt whenever t belongs to this interval given any t inside r it must be in one of these intervals okay once it is in this interval even if you take k larger fkt The, the value of f k t on this interval is the same thing. F k plus one, f k plus two, they are all equal to f k t here. Therefore, f t is very defined. All right, it is straightforward to check that f is a homeomorphism. Okay, all that you have to do is continuous bijection and an open mapping direct. Okay. If to show the open mapping, you can show that any small open interval, like minus epsilon plus epsilon, image is open. You don't have to show the whole thing is open. Any small interval, every small interval is open. Image is open. Then the whole thing will be open mapping. So I will leave that one to you. But learn this method: how to patch up homeomorphism. if things are arbitrary homeomorphism not agreeing with the other one then you will have problem so when you have inductive steps like this it is possible to patch it up to get a homeomorphism the entire thing why it is surjective here because union of all w k is the whole of x okay so here are a few exercises which will help you to understand the next topic so take some time to think about them even if you don't solve them completely all right with those words i will just uh, leave it to you to you know keep looking at them so that you have some time to think about this so here are two of one is on quotient spaces then this is our old uh, uh, friend about you know what is happening to homeomorphism from you know, what kind of homeomorphism from one interval to another interval be there okay so this is our old topic which we have been discussing several times here so there is some new concept here called isotopy it just like homotopy you meant not so i have defined it carefully we we'll go through that then we have this uh, the transitive action so you have got psi p qs so can you see that they are also isotopic to each other this is what one has to think about okay so next time we will study a little bit about surfaces so two more lectures on that all right thank you